Hello everyone and thank you for joining me for a little bit of lunchtime learning. This week I thought I would, what are we going to talk about this week? Oh, some of the menu bar shortcuts. So many times we overlook what is part of our program that gives us easy access to shortcut buttons such as copy and paste, flip, center, things like that. So as I was playing in my software, working on a couple last minute projects for this weekend, I thought, wow, I think I'm used to using these buttons. Maybe I'll share these features with us. Uh, please know that this is recorded. And if you want to keep it as a video in your Facebook library, if you go to the upper right hand corner of the post, you'll see a little arrow or dot, dot, dot. And you can choose that and click on save video and save it to your playlist so that you can refer to this um, option afterwards or this video afterwards. If you leave any comments here, I will try and get to them during the broadcast. Otherwise, we'll go and answer them um, afterwards. So let's hop on in our software, hop like a bunny and get some uh, play with our software just a little bit. Here we go. I have my, we're starting from complete scratch here. So I have my design page open and it's just a blank empty design page. And one of the ways that I like to open designs is by going to the little file folder button here, right here at the top. This is allows you to click on this and it will open a window that lets you browse to wherever your designs are on your computer. So you have to know where you've stored them. I had been working on this little floral spray in another project class. So I know exactly it's in my mini designs folder. So I will select it and click open. Now, if you're not familiar, the, when you open a design, if you're new to embroidery, you may not know that whenever you open a design, whether it's in software or at the machine, it's always going to land smack dab in the center of your hoop. That's the law. That's because at the machine, you have onboard editing that lets you move it. And in order for it to know where to move, it has to have a starting point. So it starts in the center. To move your design in your essentials or in your Brilliance platform, you click on it and you'll see that there's a bounding box around it. If you put your mouse cursor on stitches, so you can't not just in the white space, but on stitches that allows you to move this any place that you want around your design page. Now I have it in the center of my page. I can move it up here, but remember wherever you move it, when you load it to the machine, it's always going to come back right to center. So one of the shortcuts I like to do before I save my design to go to my machine is up here on the menu bar. If you can see where my mouse cursor is, there's a little blue arrow or crosshair that looks exploded. And that's when you put your mouse cursor on it, it says center the design in the hoop. When you click on that button, it will automatically place this design right in the center of your hoop. Now that's really kind of cool. One other thing to notice, my spray came in sideways. So maybe I was working on it that way in another project. If I want to rotate this, I have my rotation button here, which is a blue button in the upper right corner of the design. That's the freehand rotate. But if you put your, if you look at your menu bar here, you'll see that you have these shortcuts and these are for a rotation. So if you wanted to rotate it clockwise, just to, make it go 90 degrees clockwise, click on this button. This is the one on the right hand side that says rotate 90 degrees. And then you don't have to fiddle along with it. It just automatically rotates it exactly 90 degrees. So you are precise in your positioning. So easy to remember how to center is using this center square. Rotate is using these squares or these buttons that are here on the right hand side. I always like to use copy and paste. If you're familiar with your keyboard, command or control C is copy and command or control V is paste, just like in Microsoft Word or in any of your other graphics programs. So if you're used to doing that, go right ahead. That's perfectly fine. But in Imbrilliance, we have copy, which will take whatever selected and it will copy it to the clipboard. 
And then you can click on paste, which is right next to it. And that will paste whatever's on the clipboard onto your design page. Now, one of the key things that Embrilliance does is it puts the pasted stitches exactly on top of the ones that were there in the first place, which makes it, it's, it, it doesn't put it off center. It just puts exactly where it needs to be. So you can use your mouse to move it around. Like I showed before when I was moving the original, or if you use the keyboard arrows, so on your keyboard, there's arrows. And if you click on the one that goes to the right hand side, it will only move it in one direction or left or up or down. This is another way. So you don't have to worry about, Oh, am I getting it right lined up? While it's selected, just hit the right arrow key and it zooms on over to the right hand side, perfectly lined up to where the original one was. Now I'm looking at these two and I see that they're, they're nice, but wouldn't it be nicer? I was thinking if the one on the right was a mirror image of the one on the left. So it looked like it was a, a continuous fan type shape. Easy peasy. If I select the one on the right, Again, up here on our menu bar, we have two flip buttons. The top one, we'll flip it top to bottom. So if you wanted it to be that way, that'd be a great way of doing it. The one right below it flips it left to right. So while it's selected, if I click on this button, it keeps it right where it was, but just flips it from left to right. So I now know I don't have to juggle anything. I don't have to align anything. It's all perfectly straight across, perfectly centered, moved it left or right, but it's no longer in the center of, in the center of my hoop. So what I will do is click on the center button here. And that automatically centers my design using these shortcuts that are on your keyboard uh, allow you to quickly and easily see exactly where it is, where you are and what it is that you want to do. So one nice thing is, is whenever you put your mouse cursor on one of these buttons, it tells you exactly what it does. Finally, I'm going to click on my little letter, my lettering tool here at the top. And that puts my lettering object right in the middle of my hoop. And again, I can use the arrow key to just move it up. So it stays in the center, but moves up and down. Easy peasy. Doesn't, if you're not good with your mouse or you're, you're kind of crazy with your trackpad, this is a great way of doing it. In my text option here, where we have our lettering properties where it says ABC, I'm going to change that to happy Easter. Hit the enter key and that puts it that way. I thought, wouldn't it be nice if it was arched? So I click on right next to it here. I have center line or straight line, single line text. The one to the right hand side is curved text. And there's a radius here that allows me to arch my text just a little bit. And it's still centered. So I don't have to move anything. Now, for those of you that have gotten the Embrilliance newsletter today, it was just sent out moments ago, you'll notice that the latest update has a new font in the essentials program. It's called flare serif. If you click on this or choose this font, it won't be listed until you download and install the latest update for the software. But here we have happy Easter in that just a little bit fancier font, a little bit different than block font. I just thought was so cute. And it's one of the free built-in ones that are included in Embrilliance Essentials. So make sure you go download that 1.70 update. Last thing I want to do with this is make sure that that Easter comes in the typical Madeira color. So if I click on my color chip, it comes in as lilac and I would like it to be the same color as the tulips in my design. So while it's selected, I will click on my color chip. This brings up the color dialog box and normally it will show you the colors that are of the current thread palette or thread brand, I should say. But if you click on palettes, it will should bring up all the palettes that you have, including those colors that are currently in use on this design page. So if I want to make it the exact same color as the tulips, I can click on this, click OK. And now my happy Easter is the exact same color as the rest of my design. 
This makes it very easy for doing a color sort. Now, when we do a color sort of our designs, it will take the colors and try to match them up to create a more efficiently stitching design. And this is a perfect example because right now, if I were to run my sew simulator, which again is a button on the top bar here, it's going to stitch out the entire design on the left, then the design on the right, and then the same color stitching here at the top. If we have a multi-needle machine, that's not a big deal. But if you want to stitch this on a single needle machine, you're going to have to change those threads 11 times, as it's shown here in the lower right-hand corner. It only has four colors in this design, but it wants to stitch it, make 11 thread changes. So I'm going to run a color sort on it. This is an essentials function, and if you go to your utility menu, you'll see right here at the top, it says color sort. So we're going to click on that button and it brings up a dialog box and it says, I've gone through this design and I'm going to be able to reduce it by six color changes. If you know what it's going to do, you can click on the save button. However, I always recommend people click on new view. The reason is, is that this lets you verify exactly how it's going to stitch out. So you have no surprises at the machine. So it opens up a brand new stitch file. Now, I, you still have the original one we're working on. And that original one has three separate designs that you can move around and change lettering. This new one that says untitled, this has only one design. It's been color sorted, so there's no more lettering object and it, nothing else that has to do with it. So, and if you, to verify what it sorted, click on the little plus sign or the disclosure triangle right next to the top. And you'll see that it is made, instead of 11 color changes, we now only have five. Color change number one is the light green that is stitching on both of them. And let's zoom in to all the stitches on our screen so we can see it close. Quick shortcut key is hitting the A key on your keyboard. That zooms to all stitches so that they all zoom up here. Now we can click on color number one and see the light green if that's all gonna stitch. Color number two is not only the tulips, but the happy Easter that we put above in our flare syrup. That's part of the new update. Color number three is the stems and little details. Color number four is the white from the pussy willow. And color number five is the green, which is the same color green as the one before. But this color sort of In Brilliance Essentials is smart enough to know. And it sees that, do you see the little white of this pussy willow? It was actually on top of the other green. So it's not going to combine those two greens together because layering is important in our designs. So it made a separate color change to retain that integrity of the layers of our designs. At this point, we're ready to save our design. And I always say that there, well, under our file menu, you'll see there are a whole bunch of saves. The top ones are the ones that are most commonly used and they're shortcuts to save both your working file and your stitch file. So there's nothing wrong with going up here to the top, going to save as, it's going to save both the stitch and working. Just make sure that you save it as a different name. Because if you notice here, this is my original design, mini bouquet dash EL. I don't want to name it that because then it's going to replace that original design. So I'm going to call it Happy Easter because it's completely di a completely I different design. Or if you wanted it to have the same name, I would call it Mini Bouquet and put Sorted at the end of it or a number two or something else so that you don't accidentally overwrite your original design and then you don't have all of those the ability to change fonts or letters or spacing or anything else because this is my original with all that information and this is my sorted and the only thing I have here 
are the stitches ready to go to my embroidery machine. So, wow, all that, <laughs> a little bit of lunchtime learning. Crab, crab, we crammed quite a bit of information in the 15 minutes. So be sure to go to the Embrilliance website under the downloads page and download and install the latest updates so that you too can have Flare Seraph as well as other features in the programs. If you did not get the newsletter, we'll be posting a link here on the Embrilliance page to a link to the newsletter. But be sure to click on the newsletter sign up link either here on Facebook or on our website. Thanks for taking some time with me today. Hopefully you learned a lot. I had some fun and have a wonderful weekend and a happy Easter to all who celebrate. Take care.